Welcome to Turmeric and Tequila with your host, Kristen Olson. Questioning a better way, one gracefully disruptive conversation at a time. Welcome to Turmeric and Tequila. I'm excited to be here, but full disclosure, I'm in the studio, which is not currently temperature controlled. And I think it's like negative something in Colorado. So you can literally go watch this video on YouTube. You can see my breath coming through the screen. Meanwhile, Ashley is in <laughs> a warm place, sipping an even warmer drink. So bottoms up to uh, you and you and Ashley, everyone else is having a nice libation. Um, I don't even have an intro for Ashley because she's a pseudo co-host of the show, but we have Ashley, the Ashley Simone Knight. Let me say how it needs to be said on the podcast. Coming back to us, she is a business professional. She is an entrepreneur. She is a podcaster extraordinaire. Ashley, welcome back to Turmeric and Tequila. Hello. It's so <laughs> glad to be back. I feel like it's been forever. I know. And what's cool is everyone's going to need a double dose because we're going to be doing our annual um, New Year's e New Year's Eve, New Year's yeah. wrap up of 2020, uh, 2022. Yeah. What year is it? Um, I know. <laughs> breaking it down but today we've got a special one we are going to make it quick because it's cold but also i don't want to give this more time than it needs uh but we're going to be talking about the documentary series with harry and megan and we're going to be giving you like our takes on it and what we think but it's not really like or from my stance a, a, a for or against megan and harry i think it's more of a conversation around the whole environment of what they're in of what's going on. So if you're for Agreed. or against them, we're not here to convince you to watch it or anything like that. We're just going to do a breakdown on what we think as Americans. And what's cool is you have two different races talking about it. Um, I even told Ashley that wasn't intentional on my behalf. I love it. That works out. But yeah. I really thought she was one of my only friends that would <laughs> take time to watch the documentary. <laughs> and she was. So in any excuse, <laughs> obviously. But Fun fact, me and my mom were very into like, historical things so <laughs> not that be. i'm not like, necessarily like <laughs> excited or a fan of the monarchy but we just love historical stuff so i watched <laughs> yes i love it. well and again another place where we'll i think bring two different perspectives i'm not into like history or anything i could have been a better mm -hmm. student but i was playing lacrosse <laughs> and, and our priorities were elsewhere so i'll wear that but um, also, I'm not really like a traditional person in general. And I actually think you mm -hmm. are more like like American tradition, like just speaking very 10,000 foot view regarding tradition. Sure. So I think it's cool. Well, I think we'll have, I actually think we'll have very similar opinions. But yeah. in in <laughs> historically between us, I think we're, we're like, you're more traditional. I think I'm less traditional. So we can kind of apply that accordingly. Can't wait. But <laughs> without further ado <laughs> these are these are the highlight topics that i gave to ashley i said and the, the baseline of this conversation is tradition when is it no longer an excuse for bad behavior because you know obviously in anyone's tradition or any country or what race or nationality i think there's things that are initially done a certain way and then over time things evolve they do whether we like it or not and they change and things become less acceptable most of that is thank god um some of it's just changing and it's kind of like when is that line where what we used to do is no longer acceptable in this day and age and how do we break that and i actually think megan and harry are a massive catalyst for change whether they know it or not and mm -hmm. i actually have deep empathy because i think they're catching more than they ever deserve and you know being the brunt of that pivot change but the topics are tradition when is it no longer excuse culture mental health strategic partnerships and are the people owed anything so that's that and of course we're going to talk about racism and the conversation there there i'm so glad that was a documentary but without that's enough from me i think i'm hype on this cold um <laughs> ashley why don't you just give us like your kind of ten thousand foot view on the documentary in general cool. and then we'll kind of unpack the issues like how do you feel watching it um i will say it was keep in mind communications major yeah. I think it was very well produced you can tell they really took their time with this guy um I I am glad that they started from the very beginning yeah of like what their love story is and they did a very very good job of weaving in like British history American history black white history like all of that how all of it culminates into what is going on I didn't think that they would get that deep me either to the point where you were seeing 
a, a, a map of, you know, where England conquered. That was wild. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was blown away with how, because I kind of thought it was going to be like a, a higher end, like tabloid type thing. Take yeah. like more of their perspective, obviously, but more about the drama versus like historical context. Mm -hmm. I completely agree. I thought it was very well done and like time and energy and intention was there. Yeah. And I appreciated the education lessons because again, I didn't pay a lot of attention to the history and I didn't know a lot of it. You know, I was fascinated by the strategic partnerships between the Rhoda and like the, the family. Like, we'll I, knew, I knew that was going to be your section. Oh. I was thinking about you the entire time. Because <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's like it, business is one thing, but, but like, man, like that's your family. So anyways, um, I'm with you. I think it was good. So I don't, I don't want to cut you off there. No, no, that, yeah, that was like kind of my high level. Just there were so many themes, very important themes that would usually take like episodes to explain, but they yeah. did such a good job of like weaving it all in, in every single episode. So I was pretty impressed. I'm not going to lie. Agree. And I think if anyone's like, you know, I don't want to watch this because of the drama, because that was kind of mm -hmm. my view. I was gen genuinely curious because I think it's such a major pivot step. And I had like the vibes that like they were this large precipice for change, which, you know, I'm here for. So that's why I watched it. I don't really take interest in the Royals or anything like that. Like, I don't I don't really get it, I guess, is like, you know, simple American. I just it just doesn't relate to my reality. <laughs> yeah. So it's I'm not connected to it. But if you're if you haven't watched it and you are wondering, should I whatever? I think you should just for the historical context and like just yeah. like some perspective in general. It's not as dramatic, in my opinion, as I thought it was going to be. I agree. Yeah. It's not like deep into like the paparazzi as like, yeah. you think. like, uh, of course they're like a main reason of why we're, they're telling the story, but it's not as like cheesy, I guess, as you would, or you things you, you can't assume what, exactly what they're going to be touching on. Yeah. Well, let's start, <laughs> let's start with the positive. Cause we've got a lot to address, <laughs> you know, some hot takes to come in. Um, thank God something's hot. Cause it's cold in here. Um, <laughs> yes. But even we, hot. I like what you said. I like that they really did tell their love story from the get go, and and it was genuinely so beautiful and innocent. And yeah. I've got to give a shout out to Megan. I had no idea she was such a varsity human activist, like doing this, had her own money, own Me like either. that was impressive. I I mean, that's a she was doing some intense stuff, and not a lot of famous people are putting their they are putting their money some places some but not a lot are putting their time out there. And she was yeah doing the, the work work. She yeah. was like out there doing the work. Yeah. I thought she was just an act, an actor. <laughs> so did I. Well, I, to me, if I was in her position, like if, as a famous person, you might know or you might not, but she could like kind of go to Canada, go to, like kind of still live your life. Like to me, she had yep. like the ultimate balance until she completely did it. Um, <laughs> but where you could do what you want and then still be passionate. What you want. Again, you've got your own money. I was impressed with that. But to see where they aligned in like that, the activism. Yeah. Um, it made so much sense. Like to me, why they were together and why they had so much in common. Yeah, they they have a like a lot, a lot in common. And they kind of, yeah, they just give me the same vibe of like they're after the same thing. And I like how they both were mentioning that they had their own lives and they knew who they were before they came together. Yeah. Because you know me, that's my philosophy of how I, you know, I would want to meet, well, how I've met my person. But yeah, just like I know who I am and I I have like things that I'm into and they just happen to align with another person and we can move forward together. So I think that's why people were so shocked that the whole monarchy thing didn't work out because she's very much into like, yeah, I'll go around the world and shake hands and kiss babies and, yeah. and do whatever the monarchy wants. So I think that was kind of surprising. I think people thought it was like, oh, I'm just going to be cute and famous and just, you know, whatever, wear nice dresses. Yeah. Well, I don't, I, again, and this is maybe my non-traditional, or I, I don't know, a lot of traditional things just don't speak to me. It's not even good or bad to me. Just some of it's just not my vibe. So the idea of having to like do all these things and expectation and living in within a box, I think some people might think like, oh, yay, nice dresses and money and privilege. To me, that lifestyle looks very like caging and a lack of yeah. freedom. Like I, I would my soul would suffocate on so many levels. Um, oh, yeah. There's no way you would survive. Like, they, <laughs> oh. they put it well by someone saying they look like they're in a gilded cage, which yeah. they are. Yeah. <laughs> when you think about it, like, yeah. are you financially secure? Yes. Do you get to do what you want? Absolutely not. Yeah. Which is kind of the antithesis of America. So, I mean. <laughs> so, so then you insert American where our culture, and we were talking about this before we jumped on, you know, it, reality is nothing more than applied meaning. We talk about this a lot on the podcast. Mm -hmm. You know, if we don't grow up with it, like we can understand, you can see this, but like, I don't, it doesn't, 
like I just still don't really understand like a queen. Like I bowing down to somebody is a lot for me. And I even if it's culture and it's tradition, yeah. I would do it to be polite because it's important to you or it's what you do. But it doesn't really resonate in my heart because I don't there's no applied meaning. I didn't grow up that way. It doesn't I've never been taught that way. It's it's a new thing. So when Megan was like doing the obnoxious <laughs> bow, you could see Harry like cringing and it's been in a bunch of recaps, like the body language of how I, they said it was distasteful or whatever. I kind of think it's just, it's very American because we don't have applied meaning and it's like, we'll do it because we're te- we're told to, but there's no like heart space for it because it's not what we do. How did yeah, you feel about it? We find it novel. We, don't, right, we right. don't find it as like a part of life. Hence like why we do like Bridgerton balls. We find yeah. that shit hilarious because we don't do that. <laughs> and right. I remember you, you were like, do I have to bow? <laughs> it's like, yeah. girl, we're at a party. <laughs> I Well, again, and I'm queen, very, you are not having it. <laughs> no, I'm not. The mo- I, that's just not my thing. And you don't have any, I don't want anyone to bow at me. Like I don't, I don't right, know. Right. It's just, it's a it's weird thing. It's not part of our culture. That's not yeah. American culture. We don't bow towards each other. We don't have, no. We have a president, but you know, like we we talk the most trash about any president we've ever yeah. had. Like we're we don't have reverence yeah. as you know a pillar in American society. <laughs> Dude, don't bow. Buy me a shot if you really right. care. Like, do you want to you want to break through to my heart? Um, yeah, I thought it was interesting, but I was kind of glad to see like her Americanness, and some people might yeah. love or hate that I say that remained like there was some part of it it's like I still am who I am I'm still here for where yeah. I'm from and like I don't know I, I thought that was but it nice... made me respect her more because that's how you know she wasn't there yeah just to be part of the monarchy she was still going to be who she was she just wanted to live life with her husband and you know yeah. like fulfill their royal duties like yeah. wasn't really her thing but she was down to do it well, then let's talk about that a little bit because the sacri- I mean, in all relationships, professional or personal or whatever, there's sacrifice. In love, I think there's a lot of sacrifice. And when then you oh. bring in the family and that's a whole thing. Don't get me Woo. started there. Um, I mean, it, it, do you think it would ever, I'm so proud of him for staying in it, but like, do you think it could ever be too much? Like it could break it down? I mean, it's a lot. I kind of think they're over the hump, but I'm curious to hear what you think of like, is there a breaking point? Like, can it be too much? I think that once again, I think because they know who they are, they know what they want and they are pretty even keel people. I don't think they would have a breaking point. I also think they understand what it takes to be in a relationship. It takes compromise and it goes both ways. And, you know, I know like, uh, oh my God, what is her name? Uh, Michelle Obama was talking about how compromise can last for years it's not like oh a couple of weeks or just this one decision like you get your way like it can go the up uh, your spouse's way for years and then it might go your way for years so one thing that i found very interesting is that she was traveling over to visit him in london because it made no sense and they were dating and then she went to go live over there once they got thank married. you for joining oh, turmeric and tequila and with your host kristen olson tune in next time and don't forget to subscribe on apple google podcasts spotify or wherever you like, listen am i going to be part of this world family even though that's all he's ever known he's going to move to you know a different country he's not from canada he's not from america he had to give up a lot on his side so i think they equal they know how hard it is to give up on both sides and at yeah. different times they've been giving up for each other i think right now you know harry will always be on the other opposite side of like I'm giving more because I gave up my family, especially with all of like the tension within the family. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's very well said. I completely agree. I, um, I think it, it was sacrifice on both sides for sure. I actually didn't get the vibe like that he was giving up more. I actually really appreciated that he acknowledged she had lost her dad through this and he mm-hmm. kind of carried that. I don't know. My vibe was- He lost his dad. Remember yeah. his dad and his brother was yelling at him. Like yeah. he's not cool with his family anymore. He right. chose, and to be honest with you, I support, like I support what Harry did. Me too, I mean, yeah. It's, I mean, to me, and this is a personal thing, when you marry somebody, that is your family. And yeah. then that is your top priority. No, no longer your grandma, no longer your dad, no longer your mom, no longer your brother. It's your spouse, your children, then your family. So I feel like he made the right decision. I'm just very sad that uh, his other family members couldn't really get with it. 
Yeah, I I agree. And I just meant I didn't feel like he was victim me about that. Like I didn't get no. the tone of like, I'm feeling bad. So I appreciated that he's like, I, I don't I didn't feel that. And he was intentionally empathetic around her loss of her dad because yeah. he was there because he obviously lost his mom. Um, yeah. And, and I like, mean, like, let's be clear. She lost like a lot of people too. like, the, sure. I mean, not that she ever lost her, but that I'm um, excuse my language, but her shitty sister <laughs> what oh, yes. was that yes. I, don't know. I, don't I don't know if know. you lost her but she definitely lost her niece and that hurt my heart the whole like I can't yeah. invite you to my wedding I, yeah. I like I I mean it, I've cried for less but I did cry oh, really <laughs> yes oh, man. okay imagine like cry. no like imagine telling like your favorite cousin or yeah. like you know what just imagine from my side you know my family yeah imagine me going to aunt stacy hi aunt stacy hey. and being like you know i just can't have you come to my wedding yeah because x y and z that hurts yeah that is so sad see i don't apply that much meaning to weddings <laughs> and this is why it's good not not because it's not important they I'm had a choir saying, how can you not oh, apply no, that much come we, on we're definitely i gonna, know i know you I enjoyed cried, that part i cried when i saw the choir <laughs> okay so you cried for the choir but not for the interpersonal relationships no Got it. i'm here for the relationships <laughs> but to me it's one day of celebration i'm a, like how are you 365 days a year it's not like show up on valentine's day pop the big ring and then act like an asshole the rest of the year of i want like consistent behavior and i i get it me weddings are meaningful but to me it's more like the consistent thing if you told me someone couldn't be there that would break my heart but i'd be like we'll do something that's even more meaningful another time or we're gonna do the dance just for this because we're gonna get it done uh, but i completely hear you that it's just it's heartbreaking but they have an additional element of the money like the second the the fame came in and like yeah. the other family members can monetize this that's so something disappointing yeah so, it's like disappointing. i wasn't even angry at the sister and the dad i was just you know when you you you're past anger you're just yeah. disappointed yeah because it's like i'm pretty sure she would have gotten you some money yeah and honestly a hundred thousand oh, dollars doesn't God. go that far no not for what you're really sacrificing like no. you said if you would have played it correctly like how the rota plays it with the family yep and started doing the whole game which i think will eat your soul with go ahead and get all the money that's fine um uh, when you lay down at night you're not going to sleep well uh you know, I, it's just the, the the messiness for what was kind of like, ugh. and then both of them having to kind of sacrifice everything like your family gets yes. pretty tight pretty fast. They sacrifice for each other. Yeah. I think they I mean, yes, like he comes from royalty, blah, 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 whatever. I mean, we could have a whole conversation yeah. about what does royalty mean to you? Nothing. Uh, to me, but I think whatever. I said it. Yeah. <laughs> but like they gave up both sides of their family for their family and now they have to like you know they also put in the documentary how their friends are their truly their family yeah so i there was so many like 2020 2021 2022 2023 vibes of i was a little breaking... triggered when they were like march 2020 i was like oh no yeah. oh no don't, don't put it back out there <laughs> oh god i'm it... not ready there was so many fresh takes. I couldn't believe this has been going on this long. I kind of thought like the Harry and Meghan thing, like when they were unpacking, it was all these years. I thought it was like a couple years. And then again, I don't really pay attention to a lot of it. So I was like, oh shit, this has been going on for a long ass time. Like they looked young yeah. in their initial photos. Yeah. So I didn't realize- <laughs> What they look like now. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean- Not enough Botox for you? <laughs> I was going to say, Botox can only undo so much and un uncringe so many things. It's <sighs> It was just all out there. But uh, I don't know. I think- knowing it went on so long talking about like the mental health struggles talking mm -hmm. about the sacrifice yeah and then seeing how small their world got so fast i am actually with you i think once you're married that is your priority and to me it doesn't even you don't have to be married you can just be in a committed relationship it, but, but like, uh, yeah mm -hmm. once it's a thing it's a thing and yeah. it kind of has to be that way otherwise it doesn't the union i don't think works it doesn't i i agree and then you know i mean of course i'm taking it a step further to advance it but i think it's like your marriage matters but then also like your matter marriage matters over your children not yeah. that your children don't matter but yeah. if you're not a strong unit you can't take care of your kids so if any of this is out of, out of balance it's going to cause chaos yeah. and I think that's what they're experiencing I don't think they're having chaos between them or their children but I'm just saying like I think there's order to stuff and then yeah. when things aren't in order like this is what you get so I completely agree. It was ironic though that they started out like long distance and weren't together at all. And then now fast forward a few years, it's like they're together 
like it's just them essentially like they're i know yeah. they're busy doing their things but like they kind of got on their own island yeah. um or tyler perry's house one of the two and <gasps> you know did their own thing <laughs> a stranger low-key i know, I know. <laughs> I know. But he reached out. I was pretty impressed. Like at the, um, my favorite moment, of course, was the choir. I was like, because I remember we uh, way back in the day, we were talking about the wedding. And then you're like, you know, it wasn't a traditional wedding, but I'm like, you know, I didn't yeah. watch that. And because I didn't. And when I saw the <laughs> choir, I was like, I definitely would have watched this. But yeah, I love I, that. I, well, okay. I understand why you wouldn't have. I was, <laughs> I like, I mean, I'll watch anything just because of like historical context. And I want to kind of see where the world is at. Yeah. And I remember watching and I wasn't like moved emotionally. I think I was more so shocked because okay. I mean, like not, I mean, racism kind of like generated in England. It was kind of like the thing they pushed it our way, obviously, whatever. Yeah. We can, have, we can talk about where it started all day. I could be wrong, whatever. But the fact that like that actually happened in like that historic of a church. Yeah with all of those people shook me yeah. I was like wait a minute what that's the only time I, I teared up a little bit because I think it was Serena that was saying and she's mm -hmm. like we looked at the other people of color and we didn't have to say anything she looked at Oprah see that's how yeah. you know you're famous I looked yeah. at Oprah <laughs> yeah what yeah and the, she's like the choir is playing and I'm like mm. okay I, mean, I would have gone for this what a time um, it it was the, the unsaidness I think is awesome and it said a lot yeah. and so exactly. since we talked about the beginning, you know, their relationship, the courtship. I think that was critical yeah. being distance so they could build that base. So then we get into the Oprah interview. There's Ooh. questions around the race of the baby. There's an aunt oh wearing that God. racist brooch. Um, I didn't know a lot. Of, I knew some, some of the history of England, which you just spoke about, obviously, but I didn't understand the Commonwealth and how it's like 80% countries of color. And, I, I didn't get so I, I was glad to understand that and I'm fired for not being historically you no know, no I'm not even business. saying it in that way I'm just like I am th just the word commonwealth like they yeah. are insane like I thinking that they were gonna get that off yeah we're just like this cool group just come hang with us but give us yeah. all your resources and money are you insane it, See, oh, and that's how you know I was meant to be American because yeah. I probably I don't know what would have happened to me uh, if I was Jamaican or somewhere in the Caribbean. I would be pissed. Dude, probably any other country, I probably wouldn't be alive. I'm serious. Like it's um way too that's loud. That's insane. Yeah. Well, like just, they're still they're still taking from them. Like what yeah. what I mean, let's get into it. What serve what do y'all do besides travel the world? and spend taxpayer money let's be yeah. clear and then like if you want to take it all the way to like the beginning of history okay they say that this specific family was ordained by god to rule the country or the world or whatever they feel like saying at the moment like okay like what does that say for people who have different religions and different faiths which i know is happening in the uk like mm -hmm. not not everybody is catholic not everybody's christian like come on let, we got to be serious what are y'all doing here okay well ask me this and i'm just going to play because i'm completely in alignment with you and i agree and i again that it just doesn't resonate to me and my thing is if you if you know like the rota's working with the, the royals so like so they're they're projecting this image of reality consistently and controlling that now that we know that that's common knowledge i didn't know yeah. that before i mean you had an idea but why do you believe it as a marketing branding professional i'm telling you i'm lying to you and then you're going to believe it and then now we're going to tell you the narrative of what we're doing internationally have you believe it and you have a lot of these companies jamaica trying to get out of the commonwealth yeah. consciously so so it, it, it's interesting and one point further which i did appreciate this from harry harry goes we could have had such an amazing bridge mender or, or put having a woman of color in this they could have had it all yeah i mean to be honest i'm sorry like there's only one answer to what harry had to say and it's white supremacy yeah the minute you let even somebody with like a hint of color in i think it like negates everything that your family and or your society stands for because if they would have treated megan right who's to say they wouldn't have had more black folks coming up in that family or indian right. folks or anybody of color they would have lost it yeah and it's just one woman she didn't do anything to anybody she well, did everything they asked yeah so it never mattered yeah 
Well, that's just it. It didn't, it didn't matter. And then when they talked or they spoke about, um, it's not so much the race. It was that she was an actress. Like the American yeah. actress thing was like the big thing. I believed oh, it. Oh. But do you think they rode that excuse more just because they wanted to not get into the conversation around race? Or of do you course. Think, they yeah. never spoke like London and in the UK, they, they do a very good job of like talking about stuff, but not talking about it at the same time. Yeah. Like whereas in America, we're like, um, that's why supremacy. I don't like it. You know, yeah. like we're more like overt. They're very like covert yeah so i i knew like I, I knew once they started dating that was the issue i think that both megan and harry they both live in their own different types of bubbles so you know harry was more obvious of like oh like i grew up in the royalty i i grew up in the institution or whatever you want to call it and like he doesn't really know a lot of stuff and i will say i really respect him for saying that he is working every day to be anti-racist because it's not just like admitting to like what you may have done in the past or what you may have believed. It's like, what are you committing to moving forward, especially to your children? Yeah. But the other thing that people, I feel like people have been talking about this, but I'm not sure if like it's been gotten to everybody, but Megan lived in her own bubble too. She's from LA. She talked about this a little bit. She, she was surrounded by white folks yeah. and then she moved to, you know, Canada, which I'm not going to say it has like less racism, but like they deal with things a little bit differently, a little bit chiller. And I think that they both were highly unprepared for how they were, how society was going to react to them. I knew it was coming because yeah. of the life that I have lived and who I am. But when you live like Megan and she looks like she passes as a white woman. She does not right. look like a light-skinned black woman. She looks like a white lady. You're going to have problems because yeah. she's never had anybody come at her like that. If you see in all her earlier pictures, all her friends are white. Like she hasn't had that experience where it's in her face and she had to deal with it. Yeah. And you even see where her and her mother were like, oh yeah, like we never had to talk. So like- I was kind of surprised they, by that. I'm not going to lie. I was not. Okay. I was not. And interesting okay what's really funny is that I had this conversation with one of my friends and it all comes down to like depending on like what your background is and also like how you present to the world like I'm I'm what people consider as like a dark-skinned black woman I have friends who are lighter skinned I have friends who are like brown skinned or somewhere in the middle we all have had different we all have had runs in with racism but we've all been treated differently so Megan gets treated like a white lady, okay? Yeah. Me, you, and you're not going to treat me like a white lady. I don't look like a white woman, you know? Yeah. And then you have, like, some of my friends are a little bit lighter than me. They may not be treated like me, but they have their own stories of racism. So it's all so different. And that's why I was not surprised at how she, like, viewed the world or how she was treated up until the UK went crazy. Because everybody has their own different experiences with racism based on, the exact like color of your skin which is wild yeah but yeah very well said do you think that um harry and megan ever had that conversation around race like i didn't i maybe i missed it i didn't pick up a document it didn't seem like that was conscious which i actually love to be honest mm -hmm. but just knowing their specific roles and that they're in like everything's gonna be picked apart the actress thing yeah. the parents thing like you're gonna be everything's gonna be unpacked so they're in a very unique space but i was it, it didn't seem like race was ever kind of a, a con initial conversation for them at all once again i think they both live in a bubble yeah <clears throat> so i don't think they're gonna have as deep of a conversation so Megan and Harry would not have had a deep conversation about race the way if like me and Harry were together. Me yeah. and him would have a totally different conversation because I get <laughs> treated differently than Megan gets treated. Yeah. So I think like, sure, like she probably had the conversation based off of how she was treated, which probably wasn't that negative up until recent. So what is there to talk about? Yeah. I, I they're probably like laugh. oh yeah my kids are gonna have blue eyes great whoa you know like they have different conversations <laughs> dude I, my soul is laughing though because I know your type and it would not be him it's not oh even God. a race thing it's just everything um it's my so God. funny to me but anyways um <laughs> that's literally comedy on so many levels it's it's, it's interesting so you know we kind of get they talk about the 
the, the getting together, the, all the bubbles pop. Mm -hmm. It does sound like they're they're doing conscious, you know, situations where they're unpacking their things, what have yes. you. It sounds like she introduced him to therapy, which it kind of yep. blew my mind unless I misheard that. He hadn't done it prior. Like he's been like you lose your mom, the paparazzi, like to think you never had any sort of support that entire time. That was like traumatic for me to hear. That's to me, that's I don't unbelievable. I feel like the kids have, I don't feel like Diana's kids have had any support this yeah that man is trash like yeah. what <laughs> yeah he's worried about camilla and that's about it and maybe becoming king one day like <laughs> enjoy your 10 minutes well, you're getting we'll up say, there but Ugh. but i just i i don't feel like once again like harry would always relate to like oh i'm feeling this x y and z and they'd be like well we're in the institution we have to be this way like yeah. no like you're not gonna get therapy for that like this yeah. is your life. This is what you're, what is expected of you, which is unfortunate. Oh. But do the therapy now, like unpacking that, that years of ingrained, this is how it is. Yeah. And that's, that's why, why work. you see like, he's so calm when he's explaining the, the messiness of the institution because it's ingrained in him. Yeah. I don't think, I think it's, he's going to need what, like years of therapy before oh, you yeah. might get a tear out of him. Well, you're going to, I mean, I think you see all the things you've never seen before and all your truths are broken up, which we all have to unpack in some capacity one way or another. But for them, like your very being is like, yeah, kind of a lie. Like the, the paparazzi is being told. So your, your narrative is the truth. Like it's your family is almost working against you from day one. Your family is working against you because they want to stay cushy. And then like, you know, in the very beginning where they were showing how he was born into the institution and how they were treated as children, you know, where they were yeah. taking like a zillion pictures of them when they were trying to go ski. That was insane. Yeah. That was, that made me like the gross. way that they like the way that the paparazzi talk to royalty, like they're not royalty. Like they talk to right. them so disrespectful and they like treat a commodity. Kids yes they, they owe them well i mean they do that's why one of my notes they they pay them i mean are they yeah. they are paid by the people do you Correct. think with that proxy that they essentially do owe something to the people i think so i mean here's how i feel about it i think that the royals will continue to to live their life with under the eye of the paparazzi because they want to stay in their version of what they think is power yeah um i don't think uh, like once they give up like no you're not taking my picture anymore no this is not how this goes there will literally be no use for them exactly and then people will probably turn on them and then they'll be like well get out of here we what are we paying for because i i'm not saying that you know the rota is right but that is their agreement because they yeah. literally yeah. don't make laws they don't what do they do exactly. besides get their pictures taken Whoa, and get I used mean... for like fake fodder I mean, it worked out for Paris Hilton though. <laughs> Look at, Look. she's got her, but, but that's, down. but that's where it's different because like, she's not beholden. She can yeah. quit at any time. Yeah. That's the difference between America and the UK, the UK, like they got you by the balls your entire life. Yeah. So it's either you get with it or you don't. And Harry was like, I'm out. Yeah. I'd rather, I'd rather make my own money. I'd rather, which, oh my God, can we talk about how they almost got like you know attacked in canada like before yeah. the borders closed for covid it How, was what kind of family is it what kind of family do you have if they know that if they take their security from you and everybody knows where you live yeah what kind of family is that that is trash i don't think therapy fix all I, when i was watching that all i was mm -mm. thinking was like the blair witch project like you don't know where it is you don't know what's coming you don't know where the the fucking witch is hiding like you know i mean it was obviously fake but the point is like they're in their house like i was scared for them because like people are crazy nowadays they're psycho fans people think they were already things. climbing their walls that what it, did you think was gonna happen and yeah. they knew that would happen i know they knew and you let you you really their grandma really gonna let that happen to their grandson yeah. there's no way in hell god rest my grandmother's soul that she would ever let anything like that happen to me that's insane and I that's know. how you know they're willing to just let whatever be whatever i'll let you take my picture i'll forsake my family yeah for like comfortability and i i honestly can't say power i don't think they have power but power if you want to <laughs> power air quotes <laughs> if, I, you, if you insist i mean even all that aside just like the heartbreaking thought that that's the reality i don't know how you really like move on from that like i don't know i think there's space for forgiveness always 
just for your own soul, but like knowing that, yeah, you leave not only me, like if it was me, me vulnerable, but my, my kids, my kids, your great grandkids, you really going to do us like this? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. And I, and even thinking of that now, like thinking how graceful the documentary actually was, I don't think it was that aggressive. I think it was very gracefully done and still being intentional with the truth. Um, enough lucky it wasn't me that's what i'm saying i think they could have gone a lot harder yeah well at this point you have nothing to lose and to be honest if you would have did more drama you would have had higher sales higher ratings like they could have did the most i appreciate how classy they kept it because no you put my my i don't even have kids right now but i already know i'm gonna be that that crazy mom yeah you you come for my kids we have a problem you come for my dogs we have a problem like i'm saying yeah come for like the the pet guinea pig Problem. you're coming by Whitney Houston CDs it's going down <laughs> yes. it's going down no we're talking <laughs> but seriously I, it's it's so real I um yeah I don't know it's 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 interesting and then obviously the conversation of the race of the baby but now let's now okay so we've got that the brooch that the girl wore you see they showed the museums and saw like all these like racist statues yeah. how how are they going to or what's your opinion around how they're going to tell their kids about their history or, or to bring them to their museums like how do you even welcome that into your life as as for your kids and like their future like I'm so curious to like how that's even going to be managed I don't think they're going to be doing that I truly think really? they need a clean break so yeah. I, I don't think they'll ever step foot in any anywhere over there but but at some point the kids are going to know like they're going to know well, yeah, that they, but that's thing. why they're doing this documentary now because you yeah. know in the documentary of uh, Harry was saying you know I want to make sure that when my kids grow up and they see all of this and they know what was going on, they can ask me like, what did you do when this happened? And he'll have an answer, Yeah, you know? So I think they'll be like, here is American history. Here's, you know, UK history. This is how like things like weave together. This is the part you play in it. This is what has happened. And however you want to move forward. Because I mean, they could have kids that are like, I want to be a part of the institution. You, you oh, you're never right. know. You're, you never know. <laughs> I've been surprised by less. So that is the truth. Mm-hmm. Um, I do think though, my when I turned off the documentary, I was just kind of like thinking, because clearly we're intentional humans about furthering conversations around things, uh, intentional about evolving and progressing. Um, I would say for me intentionally uh, as much as possible. And, you know, I, I think it's hard to stay in that loop sometimes where it's like, is change happening? Or do we see it? Cause like, it's, mm. you know, all this stuff keeps happening. And when I turned it off, I was like, man, I think it is like, it's slow. We're late, but like, what are the odds that this white supremacy England thing, like whatever is happening the prince falls in love with a woman of color mm-hmm. and she happens to be an activist and all this. And like, what are the odds? Like this is disruption on such a larger level, like as intentional as individual humans, we can be, this yeah. is effing some shit up. And like, yeah. maybe change is happening. I don't know. I just had this feeling of like, it's happening. Even if we're doing the most and we're trying, like some sort of like movement is happening in the needle in the right way. And this is such, yeah, it's a big step in the right direction without any of our control. And I know we don't control it very much, but I don't know. I just had like a very optimistic feeling and God bless Harry Meghan. Cause I think they're weathering Ooh. the storm of all of it yeah. for the rest of us. But I just felt some shred of optimism. How did you feel to kind of take, no, I feel optimism for sure. I mean, <sighs> I'm very much a, we take three, like three, four steps forward, two steps back type of person. Cause mm-hmm. I'll see where things are moving forward. And then I'll see like, oh, wow. Okay. We're back to this again. Great. Yeah. Um, I do feel like a lot of this has to deal with uh, genes. Like who is his mother? Like she yeah. literally changed the world and was hugging children with AIDS and all kinds of stuff. Like she was very very activist herself so mm-hmm. I think you know one of the kids had to turn out like her and thank god because <laughs> one of them did not mm. so I I do think that they're going to you know push forward I do I do think that Harry does know that that is his calling like okay yeah. I'm my mother's son this is what I'm here to do like that's why he's always been kind of like the redheaded stepchild you know pun yeah. intended 
Yeah. So, you know, like I, I think they're going to push forward. I think they know that this is what, this is the part that they're going to play and whether it's for the, the better or worse, like down in history, they will be remembered. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I just think in general, like three steps forwards, two steps, two steps back. So yeah. we'll, we'll see what happens. I, I hope the best of course, but you never know. The side I remains. I'm, I agree. I just, I think it's not, I mean, the conversation is not even close to over. The evolution's not even close to over. At all. The things that need to change. However, I do think it's massive. And this is like my business background. Once it's on TV and we're in the mainstream, the awareness goes to another level. And these conversations start to trickle into places where it probably never would have ever been and never would have changed prior. And, you know, you're on top of your mobile home with your foil <laughs> on your antenna. You don't get all of the channels like you're only watching certain things, hanging out with certain people like it's got to trickle into the mainstream to like at least just build the awareness. So I think with the drama and the hype around it and then you got Oprah out there like mm-hmm. this is this is a tidal wave coming through and it's at the cost of them. But I'm I don't know. I think it's it's just so much bigger than than us it's bigger than them and i know that they know it's bigger than them yeah i mean that's what their work is all about so i think they've been positioned and that they know that this is what they need to do now i will be excited when i see you know people who look like me you know being put in the spotlight like you know like obviously we got to start with Megan because you know she's she's a white passing white lady but it will trigger trickle down and there will be people like of all different you know skin tones but once it gets to everybody then I'll be like all right cool like people are really taking this seriously yeah well even just the other countries being highlighted I didn't again I did not know the Commonwealth this is my own ignorance uh, of what it consisted not even the race conversation just the Commonwealth in general oh, um God. but yeah. but then but having the women coming together it was um I can't remember what country it was in but uh the women coming together and cooking once once a week so like yeah. race but also the the strength in women like gender cook and, look that was so nice yeah th- again business I'm here for it like monetize all this like it's yeah. it is, it is deep sacrifice do all of it but i do i hear you in the the space being created further for um other people like her but of different complexion and yeah. different you gotta story keep pushing background. you have to keep pushing the needle this can't be it yeah she so, i mean she's got her podcast i think she's doing it like i think mm-hmm. she, have you listened to her podcast at all i have not i have okay, not I haven't either um but i mean going back to like my like previous conversation of like my experience is going to be way different than uh, Megan's experience as it's going to be different than my mom's experience because we're not necessarily the same color as opposed to like my best friend's experience and we're a different color so I like we need to keep like yes Megan is doing the work but we need more people that continue to look different to keep coming forward and doing what and giving their perspective and their experience and then I think we'll have like a better cohesive view how people are being treated and more power of like, Hey, knock it off. Yeah. Like this is how we're going to move forward and treat people. Amen. Um, how did you feel with the Queens? This might be a hot take uh, <laughs> or hot take that I'm even asking. But the, the queen, you know, the Queens passing and then just droves of humans coming out. I, I God rest her soul. I have no ill will towards <laughs> anyone. Like a, a soul moves on. I'm here for you. You know, I'm in. Um, but the I didn't I it, 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 I was I was surprised by how many people paused their life to pay their respects and God with it if it means something to you I'm not here to judge what's meaningful to other people do you, um but I was I was stunned with like the pause it was the longest longest running oh matriarchy like I don't know I just I guess American me I just didn't fully get it and I was blown away with how many people paused and really took time to pay their respects yeah I work for a global company and when the queen passed like they took a whole week off of work they weren't working even the rota i don't know i, mean, I don't I know, know that much that, like, but all know. i know is that text people them in my know. company were not working and i was like are you si- hello i was like i i sent Your you email. coming up yeah <laughs> i have things to do i don't have time for the queen dying obviously i feel a little bit differently than the queen passing away but to be very fair like anything anytime anything happens in the royal family the whole world stops to be fair like when she passes everybody stops when her husband died where he looked like he was dead for 10 years before whatever everything stops 
you know, when Megan Herring got married, <laughs> everything stopped. So it just, everything stops when it comes to like very big life events for them. So I was not very surprised. Okay. Um, I saw, I am a uh, proponent of Twitter, um, hopefully sans Elon, not going to go <gasps> there. Yeah. Um, but uh, people were having a ball on there on okay. the other side. Like, I don't know if you... Uh, so I don't know a lot about Irish history, but I learned that day. Oh, they tell us about this. That woman. Oh, hate. really? Oh my God. The there was a, yes, there was a football game going on. People can go on Twitter and look this up, but there was a football game going on and the people in the crowd, once they found out, they were screaming Lizzie's in a box. Can't make this up. Oh my God. Uh-huh. I'm not here for disrespect. You don't have to like it or believe. I'm with it. But like, that's but here's aggressive. But here's the thing, though. Is it disrespect if like, how were the Irish folks being treated by the UK? Like, let's have that conversation. Yeah. How, are, how are people being treated in the Caribbean? Like, is it disrespect? Like, what do you, and I'm not saying that it's right or wrong. I'm just asking the question. Yeah. So I saw, I saw both sides. I saw people at my company being like really sad and really respectful. And then I saw people on Twitter like, yeah, no, this is what she stood for. Actually, yeah. you know, all these jewels that she has, she stole those from South Africa, give them back. So there's two sides to each story. I'm not yeah. saying I'm on either side, but I honestly well, didn't care that that lady died. I'm sorry. I, I'm on, I was just emotionally not connected to it. Cause it's just, again, not in my in my world or thoughts or whatever but i mean i do always we don't pay her tax money I yeah don't i mean i'm just not in it so like fine um but i will say this regardless of what you do think i think anytime something negative happened and you bring negativity to it it costs you and i'm very mindful of like even if i think i don't think they're morally correct humans for the most part or whatever i don't want to really get in it unless i'm in it and it's impacting and i need to take a stand that's different but if i'm just out here with an opinion and i'm like putting out the negativity I, that's just not my thing but if what if that's your it, way of taking a stand then that's what that then that's them that's what, that's what you want to do i yeah. just think if you're doing your time and energy and you're already not working go have a drink and kick it on the couch i just think you got to be <laughs> mindful of your energy and if you're spending it towards something that isn't going to be impactful even and that means even if you want it to be impactful and negatively because that's part of your stand you're taking mm -hmm. fine but if right. not and you're just putting it out there to put it out there yeah I, no of course i i at least from the the people that were speaking like they were directly impacted in some way yeah or but you know like their country was impacted in some way so okay. therefore like like a lot of people don't talk about it because like you know when life events happen in the royal family everything stops but nobody talks about the other side of like what they've done to other countries yeah. and they were like okay well let's have this chat this is why we're not celebrating her because she she or not necessarily her but what she stands for has done x y and z so yeah. why would we take this time to be like respectful acceptable well see that i'd actually like to know because i don't know the history i don't know um the relationship between yeah. England okay but okay so let's Ireland. let's do that like talk about history that you do know what are you going to do when trump passes away uh you're gonna pay your respects you're gonna take a week off are you gonna no, be, oh, i'm not I'm gonna pay so any energy towards it that he yeah. passed away she, probably yeah, just like the queen. what they're probably just like the queen like oh okay what's for lunch like next like i don't no, there's no yeah no energy goes towards it mcdonald's yeah. in his honor yeah bud light american flag koozie <laughs> dude i mean it's just like a what do we like i then i'll donate to biden's campaign or something i mean it would just be like a <laughs> if, if i'm gonna alive. spend time and energy in one way it's we're gonna like move it away from it like I don't know. Just be like, no, I get it. I get it. I'm just, you know? I'm, I'm not on either side because I'm not British. Yeah. I'm also part, not part of the Commonwealth, but so that's why I see both sides. So yeah. I, I, as long as people know, like, yes, of course you can have reverence. If that's what you're into, of course you can be very into their history. That's cool. But you have to be into all of the history, yeah. not just the cute parts of where they wear tiaras and go to parties. <laughs> <laughs> which i didn't even i didn't feel like i saw a lot of that either other than like 
the queen's outfits but mostly i feel mm -hmm. like i just experienced that at bridgerton it didn't look that like elegant. they do they do it d it depends on what the event is but yeah they they be wearing them crowns and oh, okay you know you could get really deep on where those jewels Again, come i don't from. i don't even so i have my own business so i don't i even like nothing shuts down for me unless i shut down yeah. so i don't see a lot of what's going on out there and i don't for i watch sure. my 30 minutes of lester hold at night and like that's all you get <laughs> we're done we're not on twitter we already have enough going on lester holt can't cover yeah. all that yeah exactly <laughs> they get two to three th two minutes and like 30 seconds to like wrap right. up a year's worth and like that's enough like you right <laughs> that's hilarious Agreed. well um we will we'll wrap it up but do you have anything else you want to cover from anyone that's you know wanting to see this you think they should see it words of advice inspiration hit us with anything else you want to lay, lay us down with i mean I'm biased. I do think that you should watch it. Um, like I said in the beginning, like it touches on a lot of really deep, personal, touchy themes, but it does it in a very good way. And it weaves it in every single episode. Um, I mean, if you're really into their relationship, you can see how it started and how genuine it is. If that's what you're into, I didn't even really care about that. So I was yeah. like, oh, that's cute. Good for them. <laughs> but, um, you know, just really, really goes deep into history like each country's history and and even like Megan and her mother's history which is like wow I didn't know that so it just opens you up into like learning more whether you're into like you know country history like cultural history and you know just seeing how you're treated in society depending on what you look like yeah. and 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 even it doesn't it, it doesn't necessarily matter if you come for royalty like it's I guess like race has been like a, a leveling play playing field, not like it'll make you equal, but like, it doesn't matter if you are Royal, they're still going to treat your family like trash, which was the leveling, like, woo, wow. Wild. Never thought you'd see it. No boundaries. Um, exactly. I no agree. boundary. Thank you. Well said yeah. no boundaries. And even if you try and put them up, it doesn't matter. Like there's right. no, just, and 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 that different and depending on what you look like and what your background may be you live in your own type of bubble not that it's good or bad but I think them showing like there are different perspectives in life based on like where you come from and what you look like and this is how I react to the world I think that's very important too so I hopefully that'll bring people together instead of like well you do this instead of pointing the fingers it's like oh i didn't know that you were living like that or that's how you view the world i understand you more yeah that would be kind of my concluding thought i agree with you and all that was very well said perspective it's very perspective providing particularly as yeah. a white person i think and someone that didn't pay attention to history which is this <laughs> emoji um and it's it it provided a lot of empathy on yeah. my end for them what they're going through and to me it's like a, a love story of you know if love can survive all of this like ooh, ooh, like it's i mean you you're know they the, love each other yeah they're coming they at the love kids each other. they're coming at every like it's like what a journey so i thought that was very optimistic and as, as heavy as it can be at, at points i like that conversation like, like let's get to it let's get it out there let's it's necessary do this. yeah it's it's for sure it's oh th it's definitely necessary but it's done in a very like 2022 2023 way and you see i think two young people that i think a lot of our young people can relate to in one way or another yes. even if it's one small thing i think they'll relate and then mm -hmm. have empathy from that because while their story is unique i do think our young people are going to be coming up in not this kind of situation but situations like this where it's maybe it's about race maybe it's a gender identity and the world's yeah. kind of judging you oh, in some way for social sure. media like th it's it, i think it's relatable in that respect even though it's like magnified for them um yeah it was just and, different than i thought and think of like all of the you know like technically they have mixed race kids like think of all of the mixed race kids in america or in the uk like they feel seen like mm -hmm. this is touching on different people more than you think Agreed. so Agreed. that was great Good for them for, you know, in, standing up and shout out to Harry for, you know, doing what he needs to do to be a great father. So, yeah, I, I agree. And uh, they're kind of like the brand ambassadors for change. I hate yeah. to say it like unsolicitedly. So I don't, even if they get the money, I don't know if they're even getting paid enough to. Oh, no, they, they get yes. money. Let's Is it enough, though, for all this? Like they will be just fine. Uh, well, no, they're definitely paying their bills and <laughs> one product. I'm not worried about that. But just in general, I just don't know. 
I just have empathy. I will say this because that is not a life that I would wish. Oh, it's a hard anyone. no. It's yeah. an absolute hard no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But also I think me and you were different. Like we would rather just, you know, take the money and not be known. And we go oh, for sure. Or keep so. the money. We'll figure something else out. I don't just leave me alone with all this stuff. Um, <laughs> as soon as it was over, I was kind of laughing at like the novelty saying of like, when my Prince Charming comes along, all I was thinking was like, give me a plumber, give me a construction worker. Look, like if this can we talk about is? the money plumbers make <laughs> well, okay, also that. electricians, <laughs> Just, give me a break this romanticized thing around prince and princesses and all this it's mm. like oh no no like whatever you do Hard just pass. make sure it's not that yeah yeah the, no. the frog better I, turn into something else <laughs> no i'm fine with what my partner does for a living and he is not a prince thank <laughs> god only in your eyes <laughs> yeah don't um, tell him that i will i will <laughs> he, he, he better listen to this though that's what's up um do you want to share where we find you even though this isn't really about you <laughs> <laughs> just do it <laughs> um you can find me on instagram at the ashley simone um yes. i mean you can also find me on twitter at the ashley simone tweet me um yeah, i'm not really her. on instagram like that but you know say I, hello i kind of like that you have twitter covered because i don't do twitter at all i so, love twitter yeah i know I maybe so i'll much. lean into that the, the elon thing is another we, i mean we, we'll see he's supposed to be stepping down but i don't want to speak too soon what if there was a party where it was elon trump the queen um tom cruise i'm out <laughs> I'm try- i know i'm just trying to think like how we can- i'm out <laughs> like the best sitcom ever uh oh. funny last last fun fact yes. uh tom from myspace oh yeah the, the picture guy yes <laughs> He's is, on- is it really him <laughs> yes it's him and people were voting like well, he put out, he put out a poll like, oh, should I be like the next, you know, CEO of Twitter? Everybody was like, please. Yeah, yes. run for president. Uh, I'd vote Dude, for him. How does he look now? <laughs> oh, like it's still his old picture. That's the funny part. That He's using hilarious. that picture. So I don't even know what this man looks like today. Oh my God. That's awesome. Someone needs Comedy. to be that for Halloween. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> love it i love it well ashley i appreciate your time and energy you're going to be back on here in two yeah, seconds which is thanks amazing for having me um, but thanks for thanks for I, i'm glad that we were able to cover this because it covers so much oh we, we could have got on my hand my feet are going oh down, my god we could, we could have gone on but i think we touched on it <laughs> honestly i actually hope regardless regardless of our opinions i hope that you are just excited or inspired to go watch it and if you don't want to commit to the time just go da- just google the history just that i will take thousand percent and yep. and dig in so I, I hope it just lights the fire a little bit to where yeah. we're opening the door to oh, spark some interest that's all i want to do i don't i don't care if you go either way yeah but just spark some interest for you to learn more amen oh, that's what we're here for i'm still learning <laughs> Same. To, but not in history class <laughs> all right check out you. ashley be ready for our new year's breakdown it's gonna be glorious Can't wait. um and we'll see you soon yay until Thank next you. time Thank you for joining Turmeric and Tequila with your host, Kristen Olson. Tune in next time and don't forget to subscribe on Apple, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen.